Hey there, welcome back to the channel. So you want to make delicious espresso at home, but you don't know where to start. Or you just got an espresso machine, but are wondering what else do you need to upgrade? Let's dive into the upgrades in order of importance to help you build your espresso setup. Now, to make life easier here, I'm gonna assume you already have a decent espresso machine, something that can use a normal portafilter basket with none of that pressurized bullshit. If you don't have an espresso machine, I would highly recommend buying something like the Gaja Classic here or an entry-level Breville unit such as the Bambino. Also, remember not to buy the cheapest machine from Amazon or Walmart. I'm talking about those plasticky looking espresso machines that cost 60 bucks. So now that you have an espresso machine, the next thing to do is find an espresso grinder. You might trick yourself into thinking you can just buy pre-ground coffee, but soon enough you'll discover that you can't get good results. The shots would run too fast, your coffee will be watery, muddy and just won't taste right. That's why buying a solid espresso grinder might be the most important piece of the puzzle probably even more important than the espresso machine itself. From my experience, you can have the best machine in the world, such as the La Marzocco or a Slayer, but if the grinder is not up to scratch, you'll get an awful coffee. On the other hand, an entry-level machine, such as the Gaja Classic, paired with a capable espresso grinder, like the Barazza Sete, can make delicious espresso much better than the previous example. My biggest tip when buying an espresso grinder is to get something that not only can grind fine enough for espresso, but also has the adjustability to make fine-tuning your espresso a breeze. Also, if you're on a small budget, consider buying a used electric grinder. Or if you don't make a lot of espresso, you can get by with a good quality hand grinder instead, such as this Easy Presso J Max over here. Next thing you'll need is a scale and a timer. If you're on a budget, you can get by with a kitchen scale and your regular kitchen timer. Usually, kitchen scales are accurate up to a gram, which is not ideal, but at least it's good enough to get started. The timer is obviously there to measure the extraction time, but you can also use your phone stopwatch to do the same thing. If you have a bit of extra dollars to spend, a cheap pocket scale, such as this one, with a tenth of a gram accuracy is the way to go. You can find a link to a cheap pocket scale in the description down below. On the other hand, if you want to be all professional, a brewing scale with a built-in timer is a great investment. Plenty of choice on the market coming from Akaya, Bruista, Rhinowares and so on. We have a Timor Black Mirror brewing scale, which is excellent value for money and you can also find a link for it in the description of this video. Let's move on to portafilter baskets and tampers. In my opinion, these two should be upgraded at the same time because they work best together. A precision basket will allow you to grind finer, increase your extraction percentage and overall improve the taste of your espresso. We did a taste comparison video using the standard Gaja basket and a VST precision unit that you should check out if you're interested in knowing the difference. The tamper is the tool that stands between you and the coffee. I'd say it's a barista's samurai sword. You can personalize it, get it in different colors, materials, and so on. So it's a good idea to choose something that fits your personality. Just make sure it's a flat base precision unit with a diameter anywhere between 58.4 and 58.5 millimeters. You should watch our tamper comparison videos if you want to see the impact a good tamper has on your espresso. Before we move on from the tamper topic, get yourself a tamping mat so you don't damage the countertop when you're tamping. WDT and distribution tools also deserve a mention, although some people don't use them and still get good enough coffee. I have both, but I must admit I find the WDT tool makes a much bigger difference than a distribution tool. If your grinder is clumping, or you just want to redistribute the grounds in the basket, you can make your own WDT tool using some needles and a cork. You can also buy one from us for five US dollars plus whatever the shipping costs to your country. A distribution tool is probably unnecessary, but people seem to find the nice polished puck very pleasing. So at least there is some benefits to using one. 
In my opinion, they are more useful in a commercial setting, like a cafe, rather than a home barista setup. But hey, that's just me. Upgrading to a bottomless porter filter might not be necessary to make good espresso. So that's why I put it towards the bottom of this list. That doesn't mean it's not useful though. It'll show you how good of a job you're doing with distribution and tamping, and it will also make you take more pictures of your espresso than you actually need. Finally, let's see the little miscellaneous things that don't cost a lot of money, but are still needed on your espresso bar. A dosing cup for your beans is a useful thing to have if you're single dosing. Also, when single dosing, make sure you use a couple of drops of water to avoid static and decrease retention. Get yourself a couple of jugs in case you drink milky coffee or you have some friends coming over that enjoy a cappuccino or a flat white. A dosing ring might help depending on how you put the ground coffee in the basket and a nog bin will help you get the coffee out of the basket. Lastly, Get yourself some microfiber reusable cloths in different colors. That way you're not using the same cloth for wiping your steam wand and wiping down other surfaces, including the machine panels. I must admit, the way I laid out the upgrades in order of importance in this video was not the way I upgraded my equipment since starting the channel. I made some mistakes along the way, so I really hope this video will help you avoid those same mistakes and get you on the right track to slowly build your perfect home espresso setup. As always, I'll be in the comment section waiting for all your questions and suggestions. Let me know if you agree with the particular order of the upgrades. Did you build your espresso setup in a similar way? Or if not, let me know about your journey and how you went about it. Before we wrap up, if you found this video helpful and you enjoy our content, please consider doing all the good things with the holy YouTube buttons. It helps us a lot to stay in the graces of the AI gods and we really appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.